Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Wednesday, October 23rd, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, a military litmus test to fire on Americans. Alex Jones reports. Then, a teen with a toy gun is killed by authorities. And John McAfee hacks into the next episode of Brothers in Arms. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. So trendy, oh, so trendy. Alex Jones is deeply racist and stand behind the Boston bombing, deeply trendy. The Obama administration is in crisis. After failing to deliver war for his Saudi and Israeli masters, now it looks like he's not going to be able to deliver the kind of corporate profits that his corporate masters want with Obamacare. First, the war news. Saudi Arabia severs diplomatic ties with the U.S. over response to conflict in Syria. Now, that was the headline from the Daily Mail. Actually, the article says that the family is threatening a rift, the royal family. That's Prince Bandar bin Sultan. He's angry that the U.S. failed to act effectively against Syrian President Assad and angry that he failed to back Saudi support for Bahrain when it crushed an anti-government revolt in 2011. Now, if you remember, it was CNN that censored Amber Lyons' report about that Bahrain re, uh, revolt, and it was also a reporter from AP that got fired when she reported that Prince Bandar had supplied nerve gas to Syrian rebels in that August 21st attack that they tried to use as a uh, cause to go to war here in the U.S. unsuccessfully. Also remember that Fox News has massive investment from the House of Saud. Now, it's not that Obama has taken a principled stand to the Saudis. It's just that he hasn't been able to deliver, just like he hasn't been able to deliver on Obamacare. The House of Saud is banking on controlling public opinion through the news media outlets of CNN, AP, and Fox, the corporate media. Now, another day, and it's another country that's angry with the U.S. about NSA spying revelations. This time, it's France and Mexico. The U.S. is hit by a new spying row amid anger in France and Mexico, reporting from Le Monde. They say that over 70 million phone communications in France were intercepted over just 30 days. Holland told Obama that it's incredible that an allied country like the United States at this point goes as far as spying on private communications that have no strategic justification, no justification on the basis of national defense. This is the kind of damage that the U.S. government and the NSA is angry about from Snowden's revelations. It isn't that the terrorists suddenly learned that they were being snooped on. They knew that. They knew that they were being followed. They knew that the U.S. was trying to get information on them. What's new is that the allies of America and all the citizens of the world, as well as American citizens, realize that the NSA is spying on everyone. What's new is the damage that's being done as people realize that we have a criminal, paranoid, and conspiratorial U.S. government. Now, Everett Dirksen once said, a billion here, a billion there, pretty soon we're talking about real money. Well, you know, we're not talking about a real website when the federal government spends $634 million on healthcare.gov and we don't get anything at all that works. Now, John McAfee has said we just need to scrap it and start all over. Mike Adams has pointed out the many systemic failures in it that it's not even completely written. It's got a lot of placeholder code in it, a lot of ipsum lorem type of things that you see throughout the code, as well as a bad architecture. And look at the amount of money that's been spent on this. They were originally budgeted to have $94 million. That was suddenly tripled in April of this year to $300 million. And then it was doubled again about the time it rolled out to over $600 million. And we still don't have anything that works. Now we're told that it's going to be fixed with a tech surge. Now, I guess they're just going to throw more programmers and more money out of it and just try to get it to work that way. They need to look at a book that's about 30 years old called The Mythical Man Month. And they pointed out very clearly that if you're talking about technology and programming, if you add three times the number of programmers, you don't get the project done three times as fast. Uh, usually it's going to take more time. Now, they were questioning Carney about this yesterday at a press conference, and they were asking him things like, well, now that you're going to do this tech search, what's your estimate on how much money it's really going to take? How long is this going to take? And he pushed back and said, well, the budget for this is something that's housed over at HHS, so I would refer you to them. Take a look at this press conference and how he responds and how it ends. Address your question to HHS. I don't have that information. I don't, you know, I, and, and this is an operation being run by HHS. Uh, and you know, again, all of this information is part of, I mean, all of this is about the Affordable Care Act, which is a, a law that was passed and signed and upheld by the Supreme Court 
in order to expand and improve insurance coverage no for the question. American people. So, I'm just saying, should they yeah. provide that? Well, should, again, should. I would refer you to HHS about what information they have and what they're able to provide. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Have White House officials watched anyone without insurance go through the website trying to help this situation? Couldn't we have a rep just come to the press briefing? <laughs> Well, while Carney pushed the responsibility off to HHS, Kathleen Sebelius, the head of HHS, was in denial. Waiting is not really an option. People can sign up on the website, at the call center, in person. We have people signing up each and every day. We just want to make sure uh, that the website works smoothly for everybody. Notice she said waiting isn't an option. People are signing up every day. Now, she was pressed by Gupta, Sanjay Gupta from CNN, in an exclusive interview, how many people have signed up? And of course, he could never pin her down on a real answer. He also asked her about when she knew about the problems. And she said, well, the first couple of days after it went live on October 1st, he said, but not before that? And she said, no, sir. In other words, they did absolutely no testing on this before they put it out. And as Mike Adams has pointed out, they have a lot of placeholder code in there, a lot of stuff where it will never work. It's simply a sham website that they spent $634 million on. Now, I think what they've done with the barricades when they shut everything down was really kind of a, an intentional metaphor for what's going on with Obamacare. They took something where people had free and open access and they went out of their way to obstruct it just so that they could empower the people at the centralized government. And whenever they centralize everything, what they do is they create bottlenecks. We see this over and over again when FEMA goes into a disaster area and all relief has to flow through it. Basically, the people are cut off. Very different from when it's a smaller disaster and people are able to help each other. And as Kurt Nemo pointed out in his article, this is pure fascism. He said, this is fascism at its most advanced stage, to be forced to buy from transnational insurance companies, making profits hand over fist. As Mussolini noted before the partisans strung him up, fascism is the merging of state and corporations. Thus, Obamacare is fascism written large. You know, once again, we have a yet another failed government program because it's not delivering what it was promised. But over and over again, we see that the failure is really only a failure to understand what these programs are really about. Obamacare is really about corporate welfare. It's not about providing health care or even certainly not affordable health care. In the same way that you have to understand what the Department of Education is about, what the TSA is about, and what FEMA is about. It's yet another one of those programs. Finally, today we have a tragedy in California, just the sort of thing that we had the open carry rally march in San Antonio about. We had a young 13-year-old boy carrying a toy rifle shot dead by the police when he refused to put it down, according to them. There's no witnesses. We don't know exactly what happens, but they said that they told him over and over again to put the rifle down. This is why we had the rally in San Antonio. The open carry movement is trying to dispel the irrational fear that people have about guns, especially the fear that cops have, these armed and dangerous Barney Fives. Now, at the open rally, open carry rally in San Antonio, Alex Jones and Anthony Gucciardi encountered the chief of police there at San Antonio and questioned him and one of his deputies about whether or not they would confiscate arms from citizens if told to do so by the government. Would they obey their oath of office? It's a very important question, and it's one that we have an answer from a Navy SEAL about right after this break, so stay tuned. Why is nascent iodine so important? Nascent iodine is so important because it goes directly to the thyroid. It's not bonded to a salt, which means it doesn't have to be broken down. And it's the most usable form. It's what the body uses. It's what the body is designed to use. If you have low energy levels, if you have pains, if you have thyroid problems, if you don't feel up to par, well, they've proven now that the fluoride and a lack of iodine causes a decreased IQ because you have all this stuff that builds up inside your system and builds up and builds up. 
And that's why some people, when they start taking iodine, will have what's called a Hertzheimer reaction or a detoxification reaction. But that's a good sign. That means you're detoxifying all that fluoride buildup, the mercury buildup in there, the bromine buildup in your system, and the chlorine buildup in your system. You don't want those things. All of those things have been proven as carcinogens. That's one of the reasons prostate cancer is on the rise, too, is because prostate takes up iodine and the men that are lacking iodine causes the prostate to become cystic and causes the prostate to swell and eventually leads to prostate cancer. There's been an extreme rise in polycystic ovarian disease, PCOS with women, fibrocystic breast disease because iodine is stored in the breast tissue, the ovaries, the prostate glands in men. It's utilized by every single cell in the body. Mm, why does this almost taste good compared to other iodine that tastes horrible? That's because it's real iodine atomic form. We wanted something that's going to go straight into the bloodstream and straight into the thyroid gland. We wanted to put it in a vegetable glycerin base. That's a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base. And that product is not tested on animals. It's vegan friendly. It's gluten free. It's GMO free. Of all the things I've done, nascent iodine was just absolutely amazing. So we developed with Dr. Group a double strength, low price. InfoWars Life. Dot com survival shield the atomic nation iodine available right now welcome back now over the weekend at the alamo rally alex asked some police officers including the police chief if they would disarm american citizens given an order to do so or would they obey the constitution that's a question that's being asked of our military as well and it's very troubling to see a lot of people at high levels being dismissed Alex talked to a Navy SEAL about this very subject yesterday. It is a life and death situation that you listen to me very, very carefully. And that you go out and then research everything I'm about to tell you. Because this information is public. It's hiding in plain view. And we must create enough awakening out there to create a large public discussion of this, and then we'll be able to stop the implementation of gun confiscation and martial law and the complete fall of our republic to a homeland security dictatorship. We won't just be able to stop that. This could blow up in their face, and we could actually reverse decades of globalist infiltration of our nation. Yesterday, I interviewed veteran Navy SEAL Ben Smith about sources that he has in special warfare who are now being questioned by higher level officers if they will fire on Americans during mass gun confiscation and that this is coming directly from the White House. I have confirmed this with Secret Service sources, corporate InfraGuard sources, clergy response team sources, FEMA sources, other Navy SEAL sources, Army sources, but most importantly, public document sources that we're going to put up on screen here and go to these articles from Reuters and Forbes and InfoWars and follow the links to the official army manuals. The new official army manuals openly say the founding fathers are bad and would not be welcome in today's military. In Forbes and in the Washington Times, they openly report on West Point and the Pentagon drawing up plans for their new main enemy, not Al-Qaeda, not the Russians, not the Communist Chinese, but the Tea Party, gun owners, veterans. That's all been in the news. What is important here is that now it's not high-level officers telling us this. It's not even the non-commissioned officers like master sergeants. It is low-level people are now being briefed and trained and prepared for war during gun confiscation and the civil war that will start. This is foreign criminal globalist groups that have captured the federal government rolling this out against the American people. I am begging you, if you have friends or family in the military, to reach out to them, to send them this video, to show them these news articles, and to ask them where they stand. We need to stand with our military, with our police, to do the right thing and follow their oaths for the Bill of Rights and Constitution. Now, I want to show you a clip from yesterday's interview with the... Uh, retired Navy SEAL veteran, Mr. Smith. And then we're going to go back to last year in July and show a special report with Rob Dew, where our sources confirmed 
that they were training to shoot Americans that don't turn their guns in. And then another call today I got from a non-commissioned officer who broke down and cried because they hang up the Bill of Rights and Constitution in their break rooms where you can hang up anything you want, like softball, whatever's coming up, or political. They hung up the oath of office as well, the oath of the military. They're pulling them down. They're now under Homeland Security Command. And that's in the news, but they can't even have the Bill of Rights and Constitution or their oath. That's how criminal and illegitimate this is. This is history that is happening. And again, here are the three reports together. So you can see the documentation. Please get this report out to everyone you know, and we can stop this and back it off. Well, going back to the, the, the beginning of this administration, there were, I've, I've had friends within the community talking about how they were brought in and, you know, questioned with people from, um, you know, more towards the top side. And the questioning resulted in kind of, do you feel comfortable disarming American citizens? And you can see that now with the shedding of a lot of the officers and stuff like that. It's, it's you know, we don't have the 100% track on it, but, you know, there, there's a lot of funny things happening within military. That's now, now that's bombshell, but I want to quantify that. I have Secret Service FBI sources on record on the air, but also covert sources that are currently in. They say exactly that for two years. There is a litmus test where officers from the generals down to lieutenant generals, down to majors, down to sergeant, uh, you know, master sergeants, will you fire on U.S. citizens? And if you say no, you're sent to the worst hellhole or basically kicked out. If you say yes, you're put into special homeland security units. Quantify, you're saying yep. people in the community, special warfare community, are saying they have been brought into litmus test meetings. Yeah. And at this at this moment in this conversation, it's a yeah, uh, to bring it back to Van Jones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, like, do you remember him? When he said, you have to, like, for us to have the argument or to just have the conversation logically, and what he was saying with, like, the communists and the lefties and the, everything that he, Van Jones is, it's you drop the radical pose for the radical ends. And just to translate that into what this is, you know, I understand a lot of libertarian Ron Paul, a lot of people that, that are your listeners. Um, get like fervent and very strong about it. And it's not about, you know, being that person that's the loudest right there, having that logical conversation to where uh, someone else can reply and you can go back with facts. And it's, it's a logical conversation that needs to be had. And it's starting to, you know, like I couldn't believe he asked um, that uh, Hammer actually asked me on air about, you know, it was it was kind of a surprise that he asked me. Like, you know, you think that the government's trying to declare martial law. I'm sitting there going like, oh, geez, is this an ambush? If I answer this wrong, this is, you know, everything goes down the drain and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kook. But the thing is, Sheila Jackson Lee, you always have somebody. If you've even got the tightest plan, there's always somebody who gives up the jig. Freedom from war. State Department Publication 7277, released September 1961. The United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament and a Peaceful World. First, there must be immediate disarmament action. And this is written by our State Department. A goal of general and complete disarmament. Second, all disarmament obligations must be subject to effective international controls. You know what that means? No Second Amendment. They talk about the stages of the disarmament process. Third, adequate peacekeeping machinery must be established. Nations are unlikely to shed their means of self-protection in the absence of alternative ways to safeguard their legitimate interests, <laughs> like freedom from tyranny. This can only be achieved through progressive strengthening of international institutions under the United Nations and by creating United Nations Peace Force to enforce the peace as the disarmament process proceeds. You guys, you better get serious. 
You better start talking to people. You better start warning people because it's going to start happening soon. Here we go on page four. Arms and armed forces would be reduced. The armed forces of the United States and the Soviet Union would be limited to 2.1 million men each with appropriate levels not exceeding the amount for other militarily significant states. Levels of armaments would be correspondingly reduced and their production would be limited. This is all by a world body. This is not going to be through anything through our country. This is through the United Nations, which means there's no negotiations. There's only killing people and machine gunning them when they don't comply. And they go through a second stage and a third stage. Here we go in the third stage. The manufacture of armaments would be prohibited except for those agreed types and quantities to be used by the UN Peace Force and those required to maintain internal order. All other armaments would be destroyed or converted to peaceful purposes. Chris, you're on the air on the Alex Jones Show. Thanks for joining us. Um, I was with the 45th Infantry Brigade and Delta Company 1st at the 279 uh, 2nd Platoon. Um, during Hurricane Katrina, I'm kind of calling it in on yesterday's subject. I'm sorry about that. For those that still have that slight hesitation in the back of their head that gun confiscation can't and won't happen here, it already has. And I was only 21 years old, just really gung-ho, really dedicated to the Army, especially to the infantry. And uh, I did whatever I was told. And, and what, what did they ask you to do? The first thing we did was we got a, a three-week uh, book full of three-week-old 911 phone calls, right? So we were like cadaver dogs for about three weeks. And in between them, we would run night missions. And here's the thing. A lot of people may think that they'll see this on the news or they'll have time to to get ready when you know when the when the crap hits the fan or whatever it's just it, it's a truck you know what i mean it's a group of trucks they pull up they stack right on your home as we did and we broke entry yeah we would yell out oklahoma army national guard is anybody in need of assistance but that's as we were booting in the door did anybody resist did anybody ever shoot back what, what happened well we had uh we had a couple of people uh resist verbally and they got stuffed and cuffed very violently uh, we throw them in the back of the uh, the five ton or the deuce and a half or whatever, and then we take them out to uh, the Greyhound bus station, which was the police station at the time. But how how did you and your team justify to yourselves and each other that gun confiscation would help this situation when it was a free for all? I mean, isn't that yeah. a time when citizens need to be able to defend themselves? It never, you know, like I said, I was just ignorant as hell, and that's kind of something that I worry about with the, with the kids today. You know, if they really realize what they're doing. You know, I had no idea. The only time it ever occurred to me that something may be wrong is we came up, uh, we were down by uh, the old French district. We came up to this man's house. He had a big wooden sign that says, I'm here alone uh, with my dog and my shotgun. Looters beware. We thought, you know, it's funny. Everyone stopped and took pictures of the sign. But eventually we took his guns. Jeez. And we left him there with nothing. I, You know, um so now that you know what you know, now that you're 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 listening to the Alex Jones show and you're you're informed, what would you advise people to do if this happens again? What do you do when they stack right? You know what I mean? And yeah. They're, and they're prepped to come into the home. There's no there's no negotiating with us. Trust me, there was no negotiating. Yeah. You, if you resisted, you died. That were the orders. You go after gunner, you die. We did a beta test here uh, up in the northeast region, and uh, we went out to all the units. And in all the armories, and you guys can all do this too, in, at your police headquarters, at your army base, wherever you're at. Well, we started noticing mission changes uh, to where a memorandum came out to where DHS is now in basic complete control of the National Guard in an escalation of force slash an emergency. So we have guys that were starting to question this, so we decided to beta test on all the safety bulletin boards. And a few of the police departments have been doing it here because we want to figure out who's on board with this and who's not. So we put up the, not only the Bill of Rights of Constitution up on all the safety bulletin boards, but also the main commanding bulletin boards around the units to see who is going to take them down, who is going to give us basically some ruckus. And mind you, I am an NCO. We were seeing the routing out of who's actually pulling this stuff down, Alex. And... Forgive me for a second. It sounds like you're pretty freaked out. No, it, it's it's scary to know we've been infiltrated by actual foreign bank operatives. I mean, this this is this is legend. What's happening to this country? I mean, this is the takedown of America. What are you seeing happening when you post the Bill of Rights and Constitution? Uh, the, the commanders are at their discretion because of the uh, the tags, uh, and specifically the uh, basically the adjutant general. They're uh, they're taking them off, and uh, we're basically trying to fight back uh, through JAG.
Forgive me for a moment. It's so evil. I know. I would cry, too. I've cried many times. Uh, so so what we did was we started figuring out, hey, who, who, who's, who's making this come down here? And Jack said it was completely, completely constitutional. You do that. And, you know, some of them are, are, are on point with this. And uh, it all came down to, like I said, through through mission changes. And, and I'll even publicly state it on air. You can all go to your governors and your National Guard and to your TAG in your state, which is the adjutant general for your National Guard, and you can ask them why they gave authority to the Department of Homeland Security over the National Guard and why the mission is now changing to gang insurrections, Alex. Why would they be doing that now? If there's not a timeline in sequence for the next six months, you know damn well what it is. But why is it now turning to not only the gang insurrections that they're focusing on for mission, now you're understanding why these commanders are starting to get the memos, including the upper echelon of NCOs, of why you would fire on Americans. I saw Homeland Security, when it was first being funded in 2002, on C-SPAN, Governor Ridge, say that you'll have to go to TSA to get a job, TSA will be on the streets, they'll be the national police force. That's why I knew 12 years ago or 11 years ago this was coming. Now it's all public. I'm telling you now, this is the takeover. And it's not my opinion. It's all there hiding in plain view. But the general public doesn't understand military affairs. The military does, and that's why they're our best hope, because they are patriotic men and women on average, and they are really concerned, and they need you to get concerned and learn about what's happening. Exposing this and causing a major debate about it can reverse it, but we are in the midst of a foreign banking takeover. Homeland Security is their fifth branch of the military, headed up by a former Pentagon guy, to take over America. This is it. This is the secret police, the threat fusion centers. All of it is for us. Now, we can save America, but history is happening right now. We can stand against this. I'm not trying to scare you. You should be scared of not taking action and speaking out. You should be scared of letting this happen. The danger is in not standing against it. If you care about your family and are concerned, you better preserve this republic. It's the shield protecting us. Once it's gone, we're another third world dictatorship. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars and Nightly News. Well, it's a dangerous situation when our government leaders rebel against the lawful authority of the Constitution. And following the show for our Prison Planet subscribers, we have a speech that was given by a World War II veteran addressing that very issue, as well as part two of the John McAfee interview with Alex Jones and the shooting episodes there. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. The following program was overseen by certified professionals. Do not try these stunts at home. Self-defense starts with safety. It is essential that before using a firearm that you seek and receive professional training. I'm Tommy Shane Steiner, and this is my brother Sid. We're Texans and Americans who support and celebrate the Second Amendment, which makes all of us Brothers in Arms. Okay, Shane, what's the kick like on this thing? Well, it's actually not going to be too bad because uh, there's some features it has. This right here will kick back and take some of the recoil out of it. Also, this muzzle got brake. A muzzle, got a muzzle brake on it, I noticed. So it's about like a like a 12 gauge the problem with muzzle brakes is it, it increases the sound coming back this way that's the one thing you're going to realize it's i know that the for sound fact. is I, is I pretty powerful it's, it's the problem i got here is it's been a long time since i've shot a uh, a 50 caliber and i'm sure that i'm not as good as i used to be so if you don't mind i'm going to imagine my target out there and i'll tell you whether or not i hit it in the center okay okay you don't have a problem with that <laughs> no 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 okay perfect
Obamacare is the same thing, you know, right? They, they've imagined the uh, the rollout as being successful, and therefore they've met their their expectations. That's and right. I'm sure I want to do the shot, same thing with my target. I I'll, I'll hit it point blank every I'm time. I'm sure every shot is going to be a success. It's perfect. That's perfect. right. John, it's daytime and these armor-piercing tracers, U.S. Army issue, won't be as spectacular as nighttime, but uh, you want to shoot a couple of these? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, we'll uh, do that next. Never, never shot a tracer around. Photon torpedoes away. I like these 50s. My type of gun. Well, John, you just got done shooting the 50 over there. We're going to put that on the TV show next week. But right now, you've uh, got that 223 M4 Scorpion. You ready to try it out? Well, yeah, I don't even know it's here. Compared to the 50 caliber, this feels like a feather. That's right. You just handheld and shot the uh, heavy 50 over there. Right. So, so this is a piece of cake. It's one of my favorite guns. The uh, AR-15 or its equivalent. It's an equivalent here. Yep, M4. Yep. All right, buddy, we'll let her rip. Nice. All right. Check this one out. This has got the aim point sight? Yes, sir. Well, Shane, we just did a lot of shooting. What was your favorite part of all the different guns we shot on the upcoming Brothers in Arms? Well, it was actually it was watching John shoot the uh, the 50 cal. It was pretty amazing, especially the fact that you are left-handed, or you, you're right-handed, and you shoot left-handed. Right, That's pretty amazing. You were doing pretty good for, for having that handicap. Well, I was amazed I could even lift it. You know? <laughs> it weighs more than my wife. So, yeah, I had a blast. I really did. We did a great job. Thank you, sir. All right, John McAvee, thanks for talking to us. And folks, can you check out your website? Give them the address. It's uh, whoismcafee.com, whoismcafee.com. And we're at Infowars.com out here with Shane Steiner on his beautiful ranch doing some shooting. Shane, thanks as always. Had fun. Yeah. All right, Alex Thank Jones you, signing Shane. off. Awesome. Hey. All right. For Infowars.com. Thank you, Alex. <laughs>
and I can be sat at home in a comfortable chair. But I'd rather be here. You don't know how thrilling it is to go down and see all you people all around here that are taking a stand for our freedom, not for our government. I'm a constitutionalist, 100%. We need the Constitution Party to come into everybody's home, and we need to vote for people that believe in the Constitution will stand up and defend it with their life. I think I've said enough. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show.